Hi everyone, welcome to All Out Coach. My name is Tim and I have a special guest today with me, my friend Kyle Householder. Hi Kyle, how are you? I'm Tim. Uh, Kyle and I are both MSLs, medical science liaisons, and uh, we actually connected via LinkedIn, uh, Kyle, and we've uh, exchanged a lot of different perspectives and thoughts on some content uh, that's related to the pharmaceutical industry and also beyond. So we became friends thanks to social media. Would you like to uh, tell a little bit about your background? Uh, you're a PhD, right? What was your PhD in? Yeah, so I did my PhD at Arizona State in biomedical engineering, focused mostly on drug delivery to the CMS uh, for brain tumors, ALS, TBI, and now work with Teva Pharmaceuticals doing uh, movement disorders and psychiatry. Um, so still staying heavy on that neurology, and I, I love learning about the brain in any way possible because we know so little and it's so fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was the interest and the focus of a uh, live, a weekly live discussion that I had with, with my audience, with my network on All Out Coach uh, on Instagram, uh, where I talked about um, attention, uh, attention training and attention management. So it was actually one of, uh, as you know, uh, one of my more popular uh, videos that I had posted, uh, gathered a lot of responses, a lot of uh, comments, uh, even phone calls. So I thought, why don't we spend just a little bit more time today to get some reactions uh, from from those those people who uh, found it interesting. Uh, and, uh, and so Kyle was one of those people. He's a very good friend of mine. And uh, I would love to just get some of your takeaways, Kyle, live and uh, share it with our networks. Yeah, uh, from attention, attention training, and attention management, based on that book, the new book uh, called "The Twelve Rules of Attention" by uh, Dr. Joseph Cardillo, that I'm very excited about. W what were some of your highlights, Kyle? Yeah, so you know, really interested to read the book, but some of the really interesting things that you covered in your video that stuck out to me. Um, the first one I would say is uh, the music that you were talking about, and that's something that. I've recently reintroduced into my, my daily routine, especially working on PowerPoints or reviewing articles. Uh, specifically for me, Baroque music uh, works really well. And I got that idea too from a Limitless book, uh, which is all about learning. And specifically the music is kind of helping you get into a flow state. So having that you know, kind of upbeat tempo, you feel that energy within you, it kind of improves your, your cognition. And then as well, you know, the reason I like it so much is without the words, it doesn't distract me, but helps tune out kind of the outside world a little bit. So, you know, I'm always turning off my other phones or turning off notifications, but there's still things going happening around you. And so having that music, you know, really helps me focus my attention into that task that I'm, that I'm doing. And then, you know, related to that, but not something that you covered is really kind of setting aside specific amounts of time. And so, you know, I schedule either 30 minutes or an hour for a specific task. And again, it's both in terms of that's my priority. That's what I'm focused on. I'm ignoring the other things. So it allows to keep my attention on that single task. And then two, by keeping it under an hour, you know, unless I'm just on a roll, it stops me from, you know, kind of, it just focus me on that one hour of I'm going to get as much done as possible in that hour. And it doesn't stop me from burning out or feeling too drained because at that point that I can switch to a new activity. Yeah. Uh, and a, re a lot of the research supports uh, your routine. Uh, a lot of articles that I've read on HBR, Harvard Business Review, uh, and, and, uh, and others as well, suggest that there is that sweet spot with 60 minutes of activity. Uh, I've seen other data that's kind of that ranges from 60 to 90 minutes, but you know, our attention span has a limit. And uh, in the kinds of Zoom-centric uh, Zoom uh, kind of world in which we live now, we have to, uh, I think, stay cognizant of that and maybe take yeah. breaks, you know, uh, after one hour in the, the I've seen some research that shows about 10 to 15 minutes 
of just time to uh, just breaks that we need to incorporate into our day. Baroque music, though, that's interesting, Kyle. Wow, it's uh, uh, it, it's it's a very it's complex type of music that you have to have a classical probably background. Do you do you play? Uh, no, no, do you play? No. Don't have a classical background. It's it actually came from that Limitless book was the recommendation, and I tried it out, and I and I've now seen other literature as well supporting classical music as one of the best to listen to while studying or working. Right. Um, say the combination of tempo and the lack of lyrics is is really helpful. Yeah, what I found interesting also about Dr. Joseph Cardillo's book, The Twelve Rules of Attention, was that BPM rate and his suggestion of kind of uh, choosing a playlist based on uh, a uh, BPM rate, right, of um, how many beats per minute a song or a particular piece has, which you can look up at, at, on Google. And uh, depending on the, your energy level, when you start that activity, you can design that playlist accordingly uh, in an order of increasing or decreasing uh, rate of BPM. So, both of those definitely came about with the uh, the pandemic and being virtual so much. Um, you know, something I love about the MSL role is the fact that you were constantly moving and changing from task to task. Right. And this change to all virtual and being in front of a computer all day long, that was where implementing that hour really helps my attention and my energy by the end of the day. I don't feel nearly as burned out by having kind of set breaks or uh, focusing, you know, say on a task for a little while before changing to a slightly different task. Yeah, it definitely hits a special uh, kind of note or special place in, in our hearts, uh, those of us who are medical liaisons, because we've been doing the remote role, although we've, you know, we, we've basically been responsible for our own territories, our respective territories, right, geographically, and we set our own schedule and some of how, some of the factors that determine how effective we are depend on our time management and our attention span. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you write down your tasks um, or, or goals in the beginning of the day? Or do you have any best practices like that, Kyle, that you would want to share with our friends? Yeah. So I, or, yeah, I usually structure my days um, Early in the morning is when I kind of tackle through my email. It, you know, to me, it sets me up for my day of, usually it doesn't take too long to get through most of the stuff. Um, and it kind of energizes me as far as feeling accomplished of, you know, got all that, all those things out of the way. And then, you know, from day to day, yeah, it's, you know, these are the tasks that I need to get done today. Here's what definitive calls I have on my schedule and where can I fit these different tasks in between those calls that is going to allow me to usually get them done in a single sitting. Yeah. Um, I'm not jumping again from task to task uh, within a given time frame. Yeah. And with the notification fatigue, which is now a reality, no matter how organized you may be to, you know, how, well, you may write down your goals ahead of time. It's so easy to just get distracted, right? So you kind of have to factor in some wiggle room and some margin of error throughout the day so that probably uh, you, you give yourself some time to recover and to also be productive. I think yeah. that alone may be uh, something, uh, you know, that I'm thinking about doing, you know, um, and that I still need to improve, for example, to incorporate those breaks. <laughs> Those notifications will kill you. You'll you'll end up jumping from one thing to the next, and that task that you need to get done never ends up happening. So right. that's where yeah, I've I've found having to set aside those times and canceling all those notifications basically, yeah. so that you know I don't see oh an email came in let me respond to this email came in let me respond to this oh, a text message came in. It's right. really needing to set aside that time so you can get the task that you need to get done. Kyle, uh, I know that you mentioned uh, having music in the background, right? So that leads me to another question that, um, about awareness. Awareness uh, versus mindfulness versus attention span, right? Because so you are aware of that music in the background, 
or something else happening, let's say, in your office, uh, but then you're still able to be productive at whatever task it is that you, you're doing. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those differences as you see it through your experience uh, in terms of how do you then uh, take that awareness to the next step, uh, next level, let's say, and visualize uh, and then actually no, don't just write down the goals for action, but actually act on, on the uh, Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, you always have the awareness of the music going, but the, what I like about having it going is it allows me to shut off my awareness of a lot of other things going on around me. So it's kind of more of a continuous single awareness that's coming into my ears versus every other, you know, different noises that would normally be going on. Right. And from that standpoint, yeah, you're aware of it, but you're not focused on it. Your attention isn't on the music. I'm not trying to, you know, hear all the different notes. I'm not trying to hear every single thing going on with the music, but it, spare my awareness, but it allows me then my attention to be focused on the tasks that I'm doing. And I think, you know, the big thing with that, you know, awareness, mindfulness, and attention is, you know, at least in my own life, the way that I've, that really resonated with me is uh, on areas where I'm trying to improve. And it usually starts with awareness. So something comes to my attention of, you know, this isn't right, or this isn't the best way I should be doing this. It then takes mindfulness of, I believe you said, you know, kind of turning up that energy towards that task or that awareness towards that specific thing. And then my attention is really my action or my response to that. So I'm turning up my mindfulness for when those things come about. And then my attention is focused on changing or making that change that I want to happen. And, you know, similar to everything else that we've been talking about, you know, you can't do a hundred of those at a single time. Right. It has to be, you know, maybe two or three things that you're really trying to work on improving or fixing and having those at the forefront of your awareness, increasing that mindfulness around them. And then, having your true attention on having whatever result that you want or how, whatever you think is that you're trying to change. Yeah. You have many friends probably uh, who are neurologists or just because of the nature of your war job, right? You probably meet with them. So uh, I, what I found fascinating about the book and just as I kind of covered this, this topic uh, but even dating back to when I was in college, you know, when I was just always fascinated by how our brain works and how it just interprets the experiences and sensory experiences and how it consolidates things into memory and the biases that we develop. You know, what, what I found most interesting is that we actually, as humans, all of us, regardless of whether or not we're MSLs or what profession we have, we have that ability to train our attention and to manage it, which then which then translates into action and change and changing behaviors, you know, but, but that, like that visualization that you just talked about is what he calls mental movie, you know, those mental movies that we can create and recreate, recreate, but sometimes people give up because and one of the reasons is maybe because they don't play out those situations enough because, you know, the way the brain develops those patterns, it takes rep rep you know, repetitive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, repetitive uh, experiences or just your, your mindfulness uh, to actually uh, to block out and uh, to eliminate a particular behavior, you know, or something, a task that you don't want to bother you and interrupt you anymore. You know, and then you become your response, your behaviors then change and they become more automated, somewhat like uh, like these sports athletes who in, in martial arts, uh, they're able to kind of just very quickly react. Usually so the issue, you know, right? a muscle memory. So to change that muscle memory takes a lot of work and a lot of attention. Right. And, you know, I think going to that visualization, I, you also brought up the, uh, in your video, the, you know, reflecting 
mm-hmm. on you know how you're feeling your attention is at different times of the day. Mm-hmm. In the same sense, you know, when I'm trying to, to work on something, you know, I might not always catch it that first time as you're especially starting off. And so it's still reflecting on your day and thinking, oh, you know, I missed this opportunity. Visualizing then what you did versus what you want to happen in those situations. And mm-hmm. continuing to do that to, again, retrain your brain towards mm-hmm. your new habit that you're trying to build. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about my, my own experiences, like, throughout the day, that you just, like, uh, alluded to, uh, I, I find that I'm more of a morning person, you know, than a night person. Or, and I also I need quiet, for example. So I, I find that uh, I, I get easily distracted by like too many sounds, just like, like you mentioned, music is, is helpful for me. Just, yeah, it's absolutely, it, it has a, you know, very ben- beneficial effect in many, in many different regards, uh, creativity, stress management, everything, you know, energy. But, uh, but like I used to always think that in the morning is when I get my best work done. But then I started to kind of change that routine recently. Uh, and I'd be curious to think of, like, to, to kind of get your opinion on this, uh, where I started to walk, walk, like, in my house or do an exercise, spend some time more with my family in the beginning of the day because I know how busy my day is going to be. So I, uh, you know, so I delay, I delay that a little bit, even though that's kind of contrary to some of the research out there that kind of shows that, look, we are, our brains are most productive probably and most attentive in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, late at night sometimes, though, when it's quiet, I'm probably, I have the least energy, I've, I find, you know, uh, even like yesterday, like this whole week, for example. Uh, but sometimes in terms of the creativity, like creativity, I notice, or my like new, different ideas, right, different perspectives mm-hmm. increase more at night. In the morning, I'm more productive and more creative at night, I find. I don't know. What, what about you? Like, what kind of, like, patterns have you noticed about your own? Uh, yeah, I would say very similar. I get my second yeah. wind at, like, 10 p.m. and get more creative if I'm forcing myself, or if I'm trying to stay awake and work on something, I get that second wind at 10 p.m. And I feel I'm more creative during that time than, than during the day. Um, but as far as my normal routine, you know, I do notice that I am the most productive in the morning, but at the same time, I need, I need time in my morning to set myself up. So I don't follow waking up at 5 a.m. anymore. It's been a while. I used to be a, now it's usually about 6, 6.30, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Robin Sharman's uh, 5 a.m. club. Uh, no, but, but so I start my day yeah, it's very popular, very trending. That that time, yeah. yeah, influencers across social media and a lot of leaders but and coaches. Start with my day with some time just to wake up and then get some exercise in, whether that's a walk, weightlifting, a run, um, and then give myself. And during that time, I'm usually listening to a podcast, so you know, getting a little learning, some stimulation going on. Make myself a nice breakfast, and then I'm ready to tackle my day. And yeah, my yeah. most intensive tasks, I'm still scheduling for that morning time frame. Mm-hmm. And then those things where, you know, it doesn't take quite as much the mental acuity I'll schedule for my, you know, late afternoon or early evening. Yeah. You know, whether that's just following up then on emails or something, but right. definitely focusing that, that heavy brain power in the morning is, is where I excel. But I don't excel like that if I don't have my morning routine to really charge my body and get my mind in the right state. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, what about the point that Dr. Joseph Cardillo made in terms of the energy, which is, which not everyone may agree with, I think, uh, in terms of uh, us being not as attentive where we're, when we're too energetic, whereas we're, you know, Whereas many may think that, look, you need a lot of energy in order to be focused. Well, he says the contrary is true. Uh, so you need to balance. Do you agree with that based on your experience your life, I mean, your life? I think it's really task specific. So, you know, if I'm just working on a PowerPoint, 
yeah, I don't need to be high energy. If I'm really high energy, I'm probably getting distracted looking at, you know, every article or digging in deep into things that I don't really need to be digging into. Right. Um, or again, that's more when I'm likely to become distracted and dart around from task to task versus, you know, when you are trying to be creative or brainstorming with a lot of people, that's where sometimes that energy can be really helpful and, you know, kind of turning up the energy of the room and getting everybody excited. Everybody's, you know, really pumped to be in there versus if you have that low energy when you're around that group, then soon everybody starts to have that low energy and then no one really wants to talk or no one really wants to have the discussion, work out the problem that you're trying to work out. So I think it's really task specific as far as moderating what that energy is or putting yourself in the right state that you're going to be the most productive. Yep. Yeah. How many uh, web conferences, Zooms, are you on every day on average? Just uh, probably at least two or three every single day. At least two or three. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Probably two or three, closer to three. Probably. Yeah. You, you need time to kind of uh, do something about those Zoom calls and those action items, right? So uh, over a week, if you keep that rate, you know, that actually when, when you think about all the uh, responsibilities from you know from life in general that doesn't leave a lot of time and then the smartphone itself being a huge dis huge distraction apparently I learned Kyle that there are some kind of apps uh, smartphone apps that actually calculate how many times you look at your smartphone I think it's called mobile I don't want to see that number yeah I don't want to say I'm worried about seeing that number you know <laughs> yeah um, but because there's just so much uh, information that you can process. Speaking about creativity, uh, I have a, an article on LinkedIn, Kyle, uh, where uh, Salvador Dali had one trick of being creative. Uh, your, your comments there um, kind of made me think about this, uh, where he actually noticed that some of his best ideas came when he was in that semi-conscious state. So he, would, he had this trick that he worked on uh, that he worked out for himself that worked uh, where he actually had a, he, he had a spoon that he held, uh, you know, at all times. And uh, basically when he would, he would know that he's almost falling asleep, he's about to go to sleep, he would take that spoon, he would have a tin plate somewhere on the floor and as he would fall asleep, uh, you know, he would drop that spoon on, on, the, uh, on the plate and that would awaken him. So he would be able to quickly record that creative idea. Huh. Apparently, I learned that like uh, a while ago just through, uh, online. So I think the reason why I brought that up is because he, he was a student of himself, his own brain. Not, he wasn't just an artist. I think what that demonstrates is that he had a lot of awareness also of himself, mm -hmm. which is the first step, uh, but it's not the most important step. You need attention. You need to do something. You need to sharpen and focus. So what, um, so yeah, that's one trick I just kind of wanted to share that you made me think of. Um, yeah, uh, I feel like that late at night, uh, my, my more logical part of my brain starts to shut off and it allows the other portions to, run a little bit more freely as far as the creative side. <laughs> yeah. We may have to, uh, you and I may have to uh, resort to some, uh, some tools or some instruments maybe, or some tricks <laughs> like Dr. Dali in order to capture those. Because uh, I'll be honest with you, some of the best probably advice I've ever gotten from a mentor uh, was to record your thoughts because bef until you're able to record them, you can't share them with the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, keep a diary, you know, it was just basically his, his uh, and he happens to be president of a hospital, a cardiologist, an internationally renowned cardiologist, a boxer as well, and a saxophone player, a musician. So a uh, man of many talents, you know, Renaissance man, uh, John LaRosa. In fact, I'll, I'll mention his name, John LaRosa from uh, SUNY Downstate in Brooklyn. Thanks, Kyle. I'm glad that you, you were able to catch, catch that video and uh, you you follow uh, some of the some of the content that I'm uh, releasing uh, from time to time, and as you know, I go live every Monday and Friday on Instagram, all our coach. And then what I do is I uh, usually post that on LinkedIn, where I also have a page, all our coach page. So 
I'm building a community there. I have a lot of good friends and um, colleagues there. Yeah, so I always enjoy your enjoy your content, and it's been great to talk with you about this. I look forward to, and always look forward to our conversations around whether it be MSL or just different interesting books that we're reading. Thanks a lot, Kyle Householder. Thanks a lot for your uh, comments and uh, for being here with me. Thank you, Tim. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Have a great day. And let's both pay attention. We'll both make sure to pay attention better and pay attention to how we pay attention.